This is the online bending light simulation, and it's this simulation that is to be used with the bending light data collection and processing activity that can be found on the student Google site bending light page. The purpose of this data collection and processing activity is to look at the relationship between angle of incidence and angle of refraction for when light passes between a less dense material into a more dense material. In the second process of this DCP activity, we can then use this relationship of angle of incidence and angle of refraction to calculate the refractive index of the material with which the light has passed into. To do this within the simulation, we're going to be using this red laser in the, found in the top left of the screen. If we switch the laser on, you can see that there is an angle, so there is an incident ray, there is a reflected ray, and there is a refracted ray. For this investigation, we're not going to be interested in the reflected ray, and we're going to ignore this throughout the simulation. However, we are interested in the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. The angle of so the angle of incidence is found in the less dense material and is the angle that is found between the incidence ray and the normal line, this 90 degree dotted line. The angle of refraction is found in the more dense material and is the angle between the refracted ray and again the normal line. Therefore, to measure these angles, we're going to need to use the protractor in the toolbox. However, um, Within the simulation, you can see that there are three tabs at the top. And what we're going to use is we're actually going to select the More Tools tab to take to measure these angles. If we select the More Tools tab, you see that two things happen to the screen. First of all, the toolbox expands, and we have more tools available to us. We're not going to be using the speed, time, or intensity tools at all. For this investigation, we're only interested in the protractor. You can also see that the top left of the screen allows us to manipulate the laser view a little bit more and we can change the ray of light, if I switch the ray on, we can change the ray of light into a wave and we can even change the um, wavelength and so the wavelength and frequency of the light. For this investigation we're going to use a ray. We're going to keep the uh, light to be red light at 650 nanometers and in a sense we're not going to touch this laser view box. The simulation itself has many, many different functions, and once you've gone and completed this DCP activity, your teacher may come back and ask you to use this simulation for other things, um, such as speed and intensity, for example. However, this investigation, or this DCP activity, uses this simulation purely and simply to calculate, or to collect angles of instance, angles of refraction. Therefore, we need to select the the protractor from the toolbox and place it onto the simulation platform. The reason why we use the more tools tab is that you can see that this protractor has a plus sign. If I click the green plus sign you can see that the protractor enlarges. This allows us to do two things. First of all it allows us to set up the protractor much more accurately and for the setup of the protractor, this black line must be perfectly placed on the normal, and the 90 degrees to the right and the 90 degrees to the left must be perfectly placed at the boundary between the two different mediums. We can then use this protractor to help us calculate or to help us measure our refractive angles much more accurately, and then when collecting these refractive angles, we can therefore assign a much more appropriate uh, possible error. For this investigation, we're going to keep the incidence material to be air, set at a refractive index of 1.000. However, we're going to set the um, refractive, or the yeah, we're going to set the refractive ma in material, the more dense material, to be water. If we click this tab here and set it to water, you can see that two things happen. First of all, the color changes to a light blue, and second of all, that the refractive index has changed to 1.333. The overall purpose of this investigation is therefore to see if the angles that we've actually gone and taken from this simulation um, eventually are lead us to this relationship of 1.333 in our calculations. We're therefore going to make sure, we're therefore going to test whether the angles or the relationship of the angles will lead us to this number in the end. To do this, we're going to have to control the laser. 
And our independent variable, the thing that we have control over in this investigation, is going to be the angle of incidence. Therefore, to do this, we're going to move the laser either up or down through the upper left quadrant of the protractor. We're going to do this at 10 degrees intervals. So we're going to first of all select, we're going to place the incidence ray to be 10 degrees from the normal line. You can see that the incidence ray here is about 10 degrees, 10 degrees from the upper zero point. We can then record this measurement with suitable, ang uh, with suitable error. If we magnify the protractor, we can then, looking at the bottom of the simulation, record a suitable refractive um, angle of refraction with suitable error as well. We can then continue moving the laser through 10 degree interval steps, so moving to 20 degrees, 30 degrees, etc, etc, repeating the same process. That's basically all we're going to use this simulation for. We're going to collect angles of incidence, we're going to collect and record angles of refraction, both with suitable error, and then in the second process we're going to manipulate um, we're going to manipulate these angles using the signs of the angles to see if we can calculate the refractive index of the material. All you have to do now is go back to the student Google site, to the bending light page, download the bending light DCP instruction page which contains instructions on how to use the simulation and instructions on how to do process 1 and process 2 and complete this DCP activity. Thank you very much.